Good morning. Welcome back. Monday, May the 11th, 2020. Hope you got through that winter weekend we just had. Yikes, it's, it's May. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to be one of our toughest lessons, I think, in the course, but certainly the most important. We're calling it the political spectrum. Now, you may want to stop right now and just take a look. I've uploaded uh, a chart called the political spectrum, uh, and that's what this lesson is based on. So you might want to have that up and looking at it following along here. There is, there's, a, there's a lot here. Uh, a spectrum is a range, uh, you know, from one extreme to another. So let, let, let's dig in here. You may need to listen to this more than once. It's going to be a long one. My apologies, but hopefully it's helpful. So the political spectrum is a tool we use to determine political beliefs or ideas about what's right. And this is tough. You know, at election time, Canadians of all ages struggle. Do I vote Liberal, NDP, Conservative, the Green Party, or one of the smaller parties? They, they all sound really good at election time. They're all promising us all these great things. It's like, oh, I like these. Oh, I like these guys, too. Uh, but somebody wins, they get elected, and sometimes we're disappointed, sometimes we're surprised by what we actually end up getting. And I think that's because we don't understand fully the political spectrum. Soon, you will understand it. And with your understanding of the political spectrum, you're going to have to figure out for yourself, well, where do I fit on the spectrum? Which of these philosophies is closest to what I believe? And once you figure that out and become comfortable with it, everything else gets easier. You can then pick the political party that fits your political philosophy, and it, it just helps because politicians do, they're, they're, they're selling to us, they're marketing. And um, this is gonna help you to sort of read between the lines. So let's get started. So on the chart, um, I've got five isms. So com starting from the left, communism, then socialism, liberalism, uh, conservatism, and fascism. Um, we're going to see if we can make sense of all this. I'm going to go one at a time. I've got some issues down the left-hand side, six and all, role of government, all the way down to Canada. That is examples in this country of this. So communism, communists, these are people who believe in communism, they believe that government should control everything in our lives, in our country. It's best that way. They should own all the property, they should have all the power, because then they can use that government power to care for everyone in the country and to treat us all equally. So they don't believe in the concept of private property. Canadians should not be allowed to own their own homes or their own cars or anything of significant value. The government should, and then they can determine how to distribute all that property fairly. Now, that's not how we do things in this country. Uh, try to imagine this, because, you know, if a communist here in Stratford was looking around our town, and I think most of us think Stratford's not such a bad place, um, they wouldn't like the way things are operating here. They'd say, you've got a lot of rich people, you got poor people, people in between. It's not right. It's not fair. Uh, everyone should be the same. We shouldn't have poor people, and we really shouldn't have rich people either. Everyone should be the same. Now, how do you do that? Well, a communist would say, I know how to do that. What we would do is we would confiscate or take everybody's house and everybody's car. That would cause an uproar. But communists would use their power, their authority, to say, all right, we're going to redistribute the wealth in Stratford to make things more equal. So they would say all the biggest houses in town, say along William Street, you know, along the river there, uh, the Gen Ann subdivision, um, and near the downtown there's some big old houses. Um, they'd say, you know what, some of these houses in Stratford is like one or two people living in them. These are huge. It's not right. We have other families in town, five, six people living in a small house, a semi-detached bungalow. They're crowded in there, and especially during the pandemic. That's tough. It's not fair. They would say, hey, 
anyone in a big family in Stratford, you got six, seven or more people under your roof, we're going to give you the keys to the biggest houses in town. You can move in. It's yours. Help yourself. Imagine that. And, and I suppose for families, I say families of five, all the big houses are gone now, but we still have some above average sized homes. Um, you guys get to pick amongst those and they're yours. Family of four, you're going to get an average size house. Family of three, you're going to get a little bit smaller house. Um, as well as, you know, if it's just two people, you don't need a big house. Small house is fine. And if you're living on your own, you get an apartment. That's what a communist would say would be best. That's fair. And if you're in a big family, six, seven, eight people in your house, you can have two cars, you know, throw a minivan in there because you got a lot of people to move around. If you're an average size family, four people, one car is enough. Um, uh, maybe a, a one car and, and then a, like a small little, I don't know, little, what is it, a Chevy Bolt or some tiny little car like that, I suppose. Um, and if you're living on your own, you don't need a car in Stratford. We're going to give you a bus pass. Now, this might seem strange. How can you do this? Well, under communism, you look at rights and freedoms. You don't have any as a citizen. You don't have rights and freedoms. The police, the government have all of the rights. You have none. That's how the government can redistribute that wealth legally. Um, it's not how we do it, but, and a communist would also say, you know what? We need very, very high taxes in this country. We need to collect most of the wealth created in this country. Uh, and then when we do that, we've got a lot of money that we can now use to provide services. So they would say Canadians should be paying anywhere from 80% to about 95 or 100% of your income goes into income tax. Wow, we don't do that in Canada. But a communist would say we really should. Now, what's the government going to do with that enormous amount of money? They're going to provide an enormous amount of free services. So free health care, which we have in this country. You go to the doctor, you go to eMERGE, you need an operation. That's paid for. We're going to go farther. Prescription medication, free. Dental, free. Massage, chiropractic, physio, free. Those things aren't free in Canada right now. None of that stuff is. You pay for that. Communists would say that's not fair. If you need to go to the chiropractic, you had a bad back, and you're, it's not fair that a guy with money gets to go and a person who's poor doesn't get to go. We raise taxes on everybody and provide all those services equally. Uh, education, kindergarten to grade 12, free. University and college, tuition free. If somebody has the smarts and the desire and the determination, they should get to go to college and university. It's not fair if they're poor that they miss out. How are you going to pay for all this? Well, remember, we're taxing almost all of your wealth, so we're getting that money. And by the way, if you're not able to work, you're on welfare, we're going to make sure it's generous welfare. You've got kids, you need daycare, free. When you retire, a good, comfortable pension. You worked your whole life, you deserve a comfy pension so you can live well. That's communism. Um, not too many countries in the world practice that kind of communism today. It used to be more Cuba and North Korea practice that kind of a system today. If, if, if this appeals to you, you're kind of out of luck in Canada. None of our major parties believe in communism. We do have a communist party. Good luck finding a candidate. There aren't many, and they don't get many votes. You know, their friends and relatives may, might vote for them, but that's about it. So communism really doesn't play a role in this country. It could, but it doesn't. Next up, socialism. Socialism sounds a little bit like communism. They have something in common. Um, they also believe government should play a big role in society, more than it currently does. Needs to care for people. So this idea of free health care, which we have, uh, socialists would say our health care in Canada is not socialist enough because in this country, you have to pay for your prescription drugs. And... You know, you talk to your family doctor. Um, some of you know this by personal experience. 
not everyone in Stratford can afford prescription drugs. They're expensive. You get these little jar of pills or a cream. It can be like 75, 100 bucks. And you go through it quickly. Uh, there are people in Stratford who, when they get a prescription from their doctor, they don't fill it because they know they can't pay for it. It's tough. A socialist would say, that's not right. This is a rich country. We should be able to afford that. We should be paying for that. They would also say, it's good that we have free education, grade, uh, kindergarten to grade 12. We should have free university and college too, tuition free. We don't do that in this country. Um, we should. How are you going to pay? Oh, and dental. Dental should also be free. Nobody wants a toothache, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, any of that. Nobody likes to go to the dentist. But if you got to go, you got to go. Some people in Canada don't go, can't afford it. Uh, socialists would say this isn't right. We should raise taxes in this country. Everyone's income tax should go up significantly. It's going to have to if we're going to pay for all this stuff. Socialists would say, you got to bite the bullet. we got to all chip in more so we can provide all these services for everybody. Uh, where can you find this? In Europe, a lot of countries. France, Germany, uh, Sweden, Norway, a lot of Italy, Spain, Portugal. A lot of these countries run their system based on socialism. Their taxes are higher than they are in Canada, but you're getting these more free services like, you know, your free health care. If you like socialism in this country, you do have a choice. The NDP, the New Democratic Party of Canada. They are socialists. They say, hey, we're socialists. Um, so election, in this last election in October, uh, Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, was talking about this a lot. He said prescription drugs should be free in this country. If the NDP wins the election, we're going to do that. Uh, he didn't win, so it's not going to happen. The part that he doesn't talk about so much is we're going to have to raise taxes a lot to pay for that and for some of these other things. Um, but that is social. It's something we could do. That is socialism. The Green Party of Canada is not a perfect fit, but they tend to fit under socialism as well. They want a lot of taxes, um, carbon taxes and other taxes um, in defense of our environment. Well, let's keep moving over. Liberalism. Um, they also believe that government should own some things, but not so much. Not as much as socialists. They like our free health care in Canada. And although they feel bad that not everyone can afford their prescription medication, they're not going to do anything about it. They, they talk about it. They're sympathetic. Maybe we should, you know, Justin Trudeau, uh, who's the head of our Liberal Party, has said we should look at covering more people's prescription medication, but he knows it would take a big tax increase. People who believe in liberalism, they do believe in relatively high taxes, but not too high. They're just not prepared to bite that bullet to provide free uh, pharmaceuticals, prescription drugs for everybody. But taxes should be reasonably high. I have to step back a minute here. Socialists believe in high taxes, 50, 60 percent, uh, not as high as communism, but high. Liberals are more in the 30 to 50 percent range. That's what people should be paying in their income tax. Um, liberal country, and so they're happy with things the way they are, free health care, but not drugs, free school K to 12, but not university, you pay for that, and we provide decent welfare and old age pensions, but not free dental, you have to look after that yourself too. Uh, in Europe, England is a good example, Australia is not bad, and Canada, Canada is governed pretty much under liberalism most of the time. And if, if that's your approach, then the Liberal Party, not big, you know, it's called liberalism, so they call themselves liberals. The Liberal Party would be your party. Conservatism, they're not so big on government. They think taxes in this country are already pretty high and should be cut. They do support free education, K-12. to They support health care, maybe not as much as the Liberals, Sometimes they think, ah, oh, maybe we shouldn't be providing all this stuff, but they do, for the most part, believe in government-funded health care. Not prescription drugs, though. Definitely not dental. You need daycare. Pay for your own daycare. Come on. 
and university college, you pay your own tuition. We'll give you loans, but you got to pay this stuff back. They believe in lower taxes. They'd like to see Canadians pay somewhere between 10 and 25% income tax. Uh, and so with less money, that means less services. So K-12 to schools, maybe class sizes need to be a little bit bigger so we don't need so many teachers. That would save us some tax money. Um, they believe in, you know, government-funded health care. But, you know, if they can cut a little here and there, they think that's important because you just don't want to be raising taxes. That's a big thing for conservatives. Don't like the taxes. Um, examples, the United States is a good example of a conservative country. Switzerland, South Korea, they govern themselves basically based on conservatism. And in this country, guess which political party is conservative? The conserv yeah, that's right, the conservative party. Our last one is fascism. It's not a perfect fit on the spectrum, but I put it there. They don't like government at all, very little government at all, very low taxes, zero if you're poor to maybe 10, maybe a little bit more, 10%. But they're not providing the services. Kindergarten to grade 12, they might provide that, but you're going to have to pay some user fees. Um, Government-funded health care, no way. And let me take a step back here. I think I've, I've misspoke a little bit, but it's a... 16-minute video. I don't want to start over. Conservatives don't believe in government-funded health care. It should be private. Maybe, you know, look after the poorest of the poor, but everyone else should be paying their own way. You need to go to the doctor, emerge operations. You're paying that yourself. The Conservative Party of Canada does not subscribe to that or believe that. They do believe in government-funded health, but most conservatives, people call themselves conservatives, don't go for that. And fascists, absolutely not. You want something, you pay for it. If you can't pay for it, you don't get it. It's you got to look after yourself. Don't look to government for any help at all. Um, countries, we don't have any great example. You know, Nazi Germany is the example that gets thrown around or, or fascist Italy during World War II. Nowadays, maybe Iraq years ago under Saddam Hussein... Um, but whenever you see these dictators running poor countries and the dictator and his family and friends are living well and no one else was, that does, I mean, that's a dictatorship and it's usually a fascist dictatorship. And in Canada, there's no such party that you can choose from. So there's a lot there. Um, people could quibble with me on, on this a little bit because uh, we're dealing with philosophy. If, if you or mum or dad's a socialist, they may, oh, Fisher's not quite explaining that the way I would explain it. The same with the other isms, but it's pretty good. Um, so from a Canadian point of view, the new Democratic Party of our major parties would like to see more government services. They talk about that a lot. Uh, they say Mr. Trudeau is not providing enough funding during this pandemic. There should be more. Uh, that would be the NDP. They don't talk so much about how that would require higher taxes, but that's what they believe. Liberals are pretty much happy with, I think we're getting it about right Conservatives would say, and, 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 and Mr. Scheer, the conservative leader, has been saying lately, I think Mr. Trudeau is being too generous with this money for people who are out of work. It discourages people from finding work. And how are we going to pay for all this? This is enormously expensive because he wants taxes to go down, and it's going to take a lot of tax dollars to pay back all this money from the pandemic. Conservatives think maybe we're just doing a little too much. So that's a lot. Uh, go through this chart. I have no work for you here. Um, I haven't left any blanks. So there's no work other than maybe listen to this again, although another 20 minutes of Fisher might just be a little too much to take for you. But sort of go over this. Tomorrow I'll have a Citizen's Handbook writing assignment. You can probably guess what that's going to look like. Don't want to burden you too much because your second assignment, the one on, um, on ancient Athens, is due not till Wednesday. I want to make sure you're working on that. Um, yeah, so I'll be back to you tomorrow in the afternoon. That's how we do things on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. But for now, have a look at that chart and maybe something useful for today. If you've got some questions, 
one of those boxes doesn't make sense to you, maybe fire me an email and I can be helpful in that way rather than giving you some formal work. But tomorrow you're going to get a citizen's handbook writing assignment based on this and the different political philosophies. Um, and I think later in the week I'm going to send you a fun quiz. Now, don't, don't freak out here. And not a quiz that I'm going to mark, but sort of in preparation for next week's lesson. Ten quick questions. I won't uh, speak them. I'll, I'll just upload them. And I'll ask you to try to answer them. True, false, multiple choice. Maybe get your parents to take the quiz too. And then next Monday, we'll, we'll take it up and, and, and we'll see what things look like. All right, this was a long one, over 20 minutes. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of content here. And um, I'll try to keep it, uh, try to keep them shorter in the future. Take care.